Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and today we're talking about Vegas Pro 17 and uh, how to level footage. So how to use some of the tools in Vegas Pro 17 to correct your footage to level your light levels in Vegas Pro. So this is a common kind of correction. Uh, I'm also working on tutorials and some of the newer, crazier stuff, and I like the slow motion. And while I was doing that, I uh, ran into a great opportunity to talk about levels. So I'm going to let this base it off my first project. Uh, I actually have two different film types here. Uh, this one and this one. And so uh, I accidentally overexposed uh, this shot right here. And we're going to talk about how to fix that overexposure. So this is slow-mo done on my camera. Uh, pretty excited about it. I have a FDR AX100, and it's got a slow-mo feature. When you're using uh, the non-proprietary codec, it'll actually let you uh, rebuffer your footage in a slow-mo. This one, I'm going to mute the audio here, it doesn't matter. Uh, this one is not recorded in slow motion. This is one I'm going to be artificially making slow motion in uh, Vegas. So, but I got a couple problems with this. It's uh, actually um, it's too bright. And in an attempt to not mess with too many camera settings, I didn't realize that. So obviously, with slow motion, you need a lot of light. But I should have. I wanted to leave all the camera settings the same, but I should have dialed back my light there. Uh, don't ever trust your camera monitor. I was in a hurry and I messed up. But now we have a great opportunity to fix this. So first thing you want to get to do is is this is different than color correcting and stuff like that too. This is light levels, and that's that's its own thing. So I'm gonna go to uh, view window, and I'm gonna select video scopes. So with video scopes, you can actually hit control to dock it in this window over here. And uh, so if you slide it over there while holding control, it'll dock to that window. And it's in a nice little spot there. I love this stuff. So uh, this, it, you can see the problem here. This is a histogram. This shows you the light spread. This is the low light stuff. This is the high light stuff. If you notice, uh, I'm in a good spot here because uh, there's not stuff cut off. So what I mean is, if it's past this line, the camera has no idea what that value is. It's just a blasted number. Like anything brighter than this is gone, and anything darker than this is gone. So I'm in a good spot because everything right here is is not uh it, there's only a little bit brighter there's only a little bit that's actually truly overexposed and only a little bit uh and nothing darker and so then i'm going to go to the effects i'm going to go find levels drop that right there so using using the histogram you can actually level your footage now now the histogram's great because it gives you the actual math because your monitor can lie to you but this isn't lying this is telling the truth so you can increase the input start to darken your footage you can see there that the footage is starting to look much more seeable now even unnaturally so so If I get too low, I start actually cutting off information. It's okay to cut off a little bit, but when you cut off a lot, mm, not good. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. There we go. That's a much more normal looking spread. I actually, pull it back just a little bit. It's a much more normal looking spread uh, through my histogram. Usually, a histogram will look like this, like this. Especially, uh, a lot of times they'll be blown out and overexposed. Most of the time, uh, if if auto settings on cameras and stuff like that will just overexpose random things because it's hard to expose for everything. So, if you want to know more about exposure, let me know in the comments. I can can do camera tutorials, whatever you want me to do, I'll talk about it. Uh, it just takes some time to make these videos. So what we there, this end is a little unnaturally low now. So I want to take the input end and rise it up. See? See what I'm doing with the histogram? Like I grabbed the lows and pulled it this way. Now I'm grabbing this and I'm increasing the contrast, right? And Every time, every time one of those little uh, one of these little dots goes out of the histogram, I'm throwing away that information. It's gone. See, I can blow it out like that. That's a bad. Ooh, that's neato. 
Um, that's a bad idea. So what I really want to do is just throw away just the top, the top end information so I can have a little bit more normal of a spread there. Now these, what, he, what the, these will do is kind of crunch your data and let you, let you kind of do some extra tweaking. I'm not going to really touch those except I do like this right here where I can kind of mess with the input end but I can then take the output end and stretch it back out a little bit and kind of soften up my footage some. Now the gamma can change too. So the gamma is your like overall luminance, like your mid-tier luminance. So see the luminance right here? That's boom. I'm pushing everything towards 100%. That's not good. And if I drop the luminance out, then that just looks unnatural and strange and dark. So uh, if you put it at just one, then uh, then that's the luminance you shot with. I think that luminance is a bit high. So I'm actually going to pull it down just a little bit to kind of flatten my, my histogram here and to, to pull down the, the luminance to fix my corrected to, to correct my shot so this is a lot more viewable of a shot it's a lot more easy pleasing to the eye what I can do here too is is I can toggle the what I'm seeing see look at that big difference right like that's blown out boom that looks a lot better now this, on uh, my last tutorial where I did this, uh, I one, I should have pulled up the histogram. Uh, a lot of times I just do it by eye because I'm in a hurry, but that's not a good way to do it. This, all, you should always pull up the histogram when you're doing it because then you really know what you're throwing away and what you're not throwing away. This can be level two, right? But this is more standard. This is more what you're expecting. With uh, This is slow-mo done by my camera. Now, now, something to note too. See how this changes over time? when the ice bounces in the cup. Anytime you have a new frame, you're going to have a new information. Uh, but if your shot doesn't change a lot, like if, if this the lighting's not changing, the sun's not going anywhere, uh, the light I have on it's not changing its output, the camera's not moving, the only thing that's really happening is there's some motion and addition of ice cubes. So uh, I can kind of trust, see that this histogram's going to look relatively the same overall. So this the same with this one over here. This is my slow-mo footage, though. So if I wanted to fix this one, I could just grab the levels and throw it on this one as well. Uh, I'm doing it on the clips instead of the time uh, uh, track because I don't. I, these have different issues. So this one, the only problem with this one, it's fine. It's just kind of flat looking, right? There's no real problem with uh, with with this one right here. So, uh, but I want to make it look better. And so you can see here, uh, I it's not overexposed and it's not underexposed it, it just doesn't have a good range of colors so to fix that see that I'm spreading out my histogram I don't want to throw away too much information You also, too, it's not just about the histogram math over here. It's also about what kind of looks natural. See, if I start getting too dark, that's not good. Unless I really want that kind of a super weird noir look. I'm going to throw a touch information at the bottom, but not too much. And uh, see, let's mess with the gamma a little bit. There we go. Lower that brightness some. So... Now, I, I really like how this one turned out. This one is more corrective, so I'm not exactly fixed with this one. So I want to show you the difference. So this one, even though it looks a lot better, see, much better, much better, this one is how I intended it to look. This is, this is the beginning and the end of how more of how I intended it to look. So I'm not, I don't think I'm done fixing this one yet, because something that's happened is when I've changed these values, I've also changed some of the colors inevitably. So you can see here 
that uh, you can see in the vector scope I've changed the colors you can see I've changed the colors uh, here in the luminance these are like a very similar shot but this one's this one's brighter than this one I can I can turn it down a little bit more in the brightness but it's still it still doesn't have that same look to it so one thing let's go look at the colors because color is light and so it's not a separate data it's the same data so when you're messing with the lighting you're inevitably messing with the color somewhat so we're gonna look at the uh, RGB parade here and uh, gonna look at the differences see so this one's got uh, different colors color spreads here so I'm sorry this is gonna have to be a different tutorial uh, about how to do this uh, color correcting but essentially you want these values to match you want to pick the one you want and make these values match that's called uh, colorizing your footage or um, um, color correcting your footage and and that's that's what happens because as we've messed with these levels and as I shot with different settings I've messed with the white balance I've messed with the color balances uh, and and so that uh, color grading is when you go through and you get all these looking the same. So you could even make this one improve on this one uh, and then make this one match that one and then you can have two kind of identical looking shots. Uh, like So like I said obviously one this is more ideal however it's not perfect uh, you might even want it brighter maybe. So. And then let's There we go. I like that. I like that a little bit better. But between these two shots, one one is more ideal with a better white. This one's the color is messed up on, and uh, you can crush those colors here to fix that. So that should point you in the right direction as far as your colors go. That is how to light level footage in Vegas Pro 17. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're looking for more tutorials like this one, especially because I'm coming out with. Uh, particular Vegas Pro 17 uh, tutorials that you can only do on 17, but also tutorials that you can do on all sorts of versions of Vegas as well. And I do lots of movie studios tutorials, and I'm going to see, uh, I'm not exactly sure at the moment what movie studios offers is this, but I'm going to look at what movie studios can do for these fo this footage as well, and, and try and make sure that there's a tutorial on how to level things in movie studios too. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. If you're interested in purchasing Vegas, if you do that through our affiliate links, that would be great. There's also a way to sign up through Skillshare to see uh, a Skillshare how to edit tutorial I've got. If you do that, that'll help me out as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.